Hey everybody, I'm Chris, and this is my channel, Chesapeake Chris. Thanks for stopping by. My buddy Ray up in Pennsylvania has fly fished for years now, and recently he just started musky fishing. So he thought, hey, you know what would be a great idea? Let's merge the two. Let's fly fish for muskies. So Ray bought a bunch of supplies, and he started tying flies, big flies, for muskies. He already owned some uh, flies that he purchased and some musky lures, but he wanted to try tying his own flies. So I had Ray tie a musky fly and I videoed it. And that's what this video is about. It's a little bit longer than normal videos, but if you want to see Ray build a musky fly from a bare hook up to a completed fly, please stick around. Here's some of Ray's supplies. Of course, he has big hooks. He's got some hackle and some different materials to tie onto it. He also has a bobbin there with some thread. He also has some eyes and some other supplies. I uh, take my thread. Mm -hmm. I start up here at the top and uh, I just start wrapping it around like this. To yeah. work, when it starts to bend right so then I bring it back out and usually a good starting point for me is right about where the hook point right is. about where the hook point is is where I leave that so okay. what I do now usually and this might be overkill but I usually put some zappa gap which is like super glue yeah I put it on here just to kind of bond that to the hook shank because I'm dealing with muskies mm -hmm. I always have in the back of my head that I want uh I want this thing to be like bulletproof, like Viking, <laughs> like Viking built. So, yeah. okay. In order to mimic uh, a um, feeder fish in the water, you want something that resembles a tail, right? Because when you're pulling it through the water, you want something that's gonna catch the fish's eye and resemble a tail. Because well, let me think. I only have uh, I have I don't have that many uh, like silver or grayish type. Uh, so this will kind of be one that's going to be um, fashioned more for the outer banks, mm -hmm. we'll say. So oh, okay. What I'm going to start out with, this is just saddle. This is just saddle hackle. And uh, what I'll do is a couple of these longer feathers that are up top here, I kind of bring them out. You used to tie flies, right, before you Yeah, tying... yeah, but they're... Honestly, but, there, I mean, there's very little from that I carried over to this. So I'm just digging a couple of these black feathers out, basically, because they're the longest one on that hackle. So I usually do maybe about three, or I do one big feather, which I didn't bring any big feathers. So I don't remember seeing So that. what I usually do... I don't remember seeing it in that color. But. ...is this first bit of shaft right here, like the, uh, maybe the first half inch mm -hmm. or whatever... I tear off um, these little, these little. Uh, they're the fluffy kind of feathers toward the bottom. Yeah. Plus, I want that shaft to lay on this shaft so I can get the thread mm -hmm. uh, tight to it. What I'll, I'll clean these because I'm planning to put these all on right now. Now let me ask you a question before you can get to it. Yeah. Do you thread each one one at a time, or if you have three, do you put all three on and then it, wrap them? Honestly, it, so when I matter. first started out, I, I would like do them individually, but I'll, I usually, I, I basically do still do them individually, just so I can, just for strength reasons. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I look at them feathers, and I think, okay, so looking at it this way, that curls in this way. Mm -hmm. So if I put it on that side, that's going to kind of fan out like a tail. Mm-hmm. You know, so I know I want that one over on this side. So I just lay it against that shaft. You just do a and couple wraps. And you do a you do a light wrap, and then you get um, 
a little bit stronger as you go because it'll it'll actually move that feather around so there's that side of the tail so out of these two I think I like this one and we'll put it on this way to be this side of the tail and then just for more movement I'll put one in the middle facing that oh yeah way. that's cool what I'll do then is those three little shafts that I just put on there I'll cover them and then I'll usually put yeah. a little bit of I'll, I'll I'll put you'll see me put glue on them uh, pretty much every stage a lot of, the, of glue huh? just just because that's got a layers and glue it's just like putting a cast on mm -hmm. uh, you want it to be uh, strong so that's how you do that so after this I usually put something synthetic on there and since I'm doing uh, since I'm doing ocean colored and I showed you a picture of that pinfish earlier it has a lot of silvers and grays and stuff yep. on it so I got this um, this is like a light gray or a silver um, so this is one you may use down there for synthetic yeah this might red be out, this is probably gonna be yeah this will okay. probably be an outer banks the amount that I use varies sometimes so when I get out here toward the front if I want this stuff to really plume up I actually backwards tie it so I'll explain how I'll explain what I'm talking about there this bit of stuff right here I can tie it on this way and get it around the hook to get my butt fish shape kind of going started or whatever but what I was talking about backwards tying is I can tie it this way, way yeah. and tie it, and it'll be circular, and then I push these back over themselves them and wrap back. it again, and that makes it pull, flare makes out. It flare up. Yeah, it'll make it much. Yeah. It, it does. Yeah, it does. Cool. But um, this far back in the, in the uh, fly, I usually tie them this other way. Yeah. What do I do? I put that on there, and I kind of start it around with my fingers a little bit. And then do a loose wrap. And then maybe two, like so. Then I, really, from here on out, I'm really just looking. I'm looking at the fly from above, below. I kind of want that uh, to flow around there good. And you can kind of manipula manipulate it a little bit right now till you get it how you want it, mm -hmm. like so. And then when you're done, you can also come back and trim yeah, you can at trim. an angle, which, you know, this is a little bit longer, and then I'll probably trim it up or whatever, but... How long does it take for that stuff to dry? It, it, it'll pretty it's quick. like super glue. It'll stick your fingers right together. So it's pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and it's just called Zappa Gap. A Zappa Gap is, it holds up underwater real well. It, yeah. It holds up, like... Being exposed to water and salt water, and you know, I'm rough on stuff. Yeah. So now I trim this off just okay. so it's not bulky. I want skinny shaft here right. for a while till I get out toward the end. You know. Okay. We got them fins sticking down. You know, and now we got a tail going out through there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. So uh, right now I'll put a little bit of flash in it. That this stuff's flash, neat because it yeah. has a greenish purplish. It, it it's rainbow it's, almost. Yeah, you know, light hits it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like fiber optic. And I don't want it to be as long as that, so I want it to be a little bit shorter. It doesn't. Well, at, at the house too, I have everything sitting. Like yeah, my you're... station, I can rock through them really yeah. quick. But... Especially if you do assembly line, if you want to sit down and do like six. Yeah, yeah. And at thirty <clears throat> bucks a piece, I can make a eight. I can make in in uh, in an hour or so. I can make, you know. So I'll kind of, I'll kind of spread that around until I think it looks good, or think until I think it looks pretty even around there. Put my zappa gap on. I like to leave material on here, and then just put those barbells inside and tie them on. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of makes the head on its own, but. Mm. So now again, I'll trim. I'll trim this stuff up. Just don't cut your thread. Huh? No, I've done it. 
Believe if you do, can you just see all that stuff and then just start to wrap again? Right now, I could cut that off yeah. and just keep just that's go. I mean, yeah, go as again, long as it's know? sealed with that zapping yeah. app stuff. Yep, yep, that's all that matters. So now I'm gonna put a rattle. Oh yeah, in. yeah. They're yeah. a little, they're a little glass tube mm -hmm. with uh, little BBs in with it. some BBs in them. So what I do now is I kind of spread that a little bit, kind of tucker, kind of tucker in right there. And then I oh, just there's a flange wrap, there's a little okay. flange that keeps it going from frontwards and backward. I try to keep it centered pretty well on top of the and running in line with the hook, like that. And there's the rattle. Then that has the rattles in it already mm -hmm. now. So now I put a little bit of zappa gap on it. Muskies are so <laughs> aggressive, and they have very sharp teeth and plenty of them. I don't know exactly what it's going to do to these <laughs> things, but I'm willing to yeah. have them be one use. Yeah. And I, honestly, I'm I'm willing to 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 do one use if it catches me a musky. I can say or, or a redfish or a red drum or whatever. I'd sacrifice a fly for a 40, 42 inch musky or whatever. Right. <laughs> Fifty, whatever. I guess. Right. So at this point, I'll probably do some more of this silver or. Some of that darker, dark gray may not some be Some of that bad. darker gray might look pretty Cause good. Because there was some dark gray on that pinfish, too. Right. It was dark and light gray. Use, uh, let me see. That deal saw. I'll use it about here. The double, uh, the hooks, the reticulated uh, musky flies are a little funner to, to tie just because mm -hmm. you, uh, you know, you, you can get like a little bit more creative Cre and... Right. So then, this here uh, one I'm just trying really, my, my main concern is to get it to cover that rattle, which uh, I don't necessarily think that Muskie would really mind just being able to see that, but it's more Pro for probably me. Probably not. I yes. mind it. The real creative part is this next bit because um, this front either serves as a head or doesn't serve as a head. And if you put if you if you make it look like some sort of head, you can put eyes to it, mm -hmm. which you don't need at all. You can leave it just thread like a traditional fly or mm -hmm. like a um, like a jig or something would be. Because there again, I don't think muskies care that much. I have eyes, so it's nice to kind of use them. Yeah. But, um, well, like I said, I believe in the, the actual little head of a jig on a swim bait. The color of it is a big difference. Now. Right. I didn't used to think so. I thought the body is all that mattered. Not anymore. Not the case. That's not what I found. Right. What I probably do for this next bit, so I'll probably use this uh, chartreuse or this light. It's not really a chartreuse. It's like more of a light green or an olive drab green. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably use it. And there again, uh, the, your uh, amount choice is is personal preference and uh, experience. Like what works for... Honestly, when you start working with bucktail, it is so much nicer to use this synthetic yeah, stuff. It's, yeah. uh, it's way more predictable. And it's going to be tougher in the water. I you know, It's going to hold up better. How about cost? Does it cost more or less? No, it's cheap. The fake, the fake stuff's no, it, cheap. It's, uh, it's cheaper than uh, a regular, regular bucktail. Okay. This is manufactured stuff, so th this you can basically dictate what length you want and mm -hmm. what color you yeah, want. So, yeah, well, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's cheaper, and I think it'll hold I up better. I think it'll hold up better. Yeah. I'll just cut that off. Now, you can do this a couple different ways, too. Uh... What I'll probably do is I'll bring it all the way forward. Okay, and then I can bring it back here and I can actually pull it and fan it out a little bit. Like you'll see it, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll kind of fan out and uh, start to look more even. Oh more. yeah, yeah. See that side there, I need more pulled over, so I'll just take it. It's like 
kind of even that out. And I look at them from the front. I look at them All from different the back. Angles. And yeah, I look at them around. And that looks that looks pretty even for me. Yeah. And I'm cool with that. So what I normally do now is cinch that down so that it don't move. Like we're building layers as we come out. It has to be strong. I mean, mm -hmm. it just has to be. As many layers, as many, much glue, and as much uh, thread as thread, you put on, yeah. it just has to be strong, you know? Now I need to make up my mind of what I want to do with the front as far as eyeballs go. Mm -hmm. So I have these dumbbell eyes, mm -hmm. and they're nice for if you're going to end it like this. These dumbbell hologram dumbbell eyes, they just look like a little, they just look like a little dumbbell. Mm -hmm. And basically, once you put it on there, that thing starts to look like a fish with uh, <laughs> with a little nose and the whole nine yards. So, yeah. what I'll generally do is get me some thread down there, and then I go. Well, you have to like cross over. I go a crisscross pattern. Yeah, you have to like cross over. This way a couple, a couple spins, then bring it around and go this way a couple, a couple turns. And then you, right now's the time if if those eyes need adjusted. Now's the time that you adjust them. So there again, I look at this here, then I try to make it flat here because yeah. that lines my eye up make pretty it as straight decent. as you can. And uh, once I get it where I want it. And I think it's starting to look like a little fish. I'll go ahead and um, finish cinching it there. And then a couple out front. Looks good. I'm going to lock it in with Zap again. Now, like I said, I am monkeying around at home with being able to pour epoxy on here and actually making a head. Yeah, build it but up. I don't know how important it is. I I, I don't. Because there's yeah. not a whole lot of people doing musky fly stuff. So I'm kind of making it up as I go. Yeah. And I'm having a lot of fun doing just that. I'm going to be recording all my follows, my hits, my catches, hopefully. You're going to wear your GoPro, right? I'm going to wear my GoPro, okay. so I'll have footage. And then I'll be able to go back in reference mm -hmm. what work did it have eyes did it not have eyes was it a full moon was it not a full moon was it a new moon was it a you know yeah i'll be able to do all that stuff and then i'll have a place to compare it to but sometimes i will take some of this uh dubbing ice dubbing it's called mm -hmm. and uh you can kind of make a little head out of this stuff i mean it's like it's not perfect but And then uh, you can make like a little, you can kind of make a little head out of it. Center down out front. So pretty much, Chris, that one right there, I wouldn't be afraid to fish it, you know, to see what uh, see what it does. So. Basically, what I do now is I put, I get, I get that end wet with Zapagat. And then I tie a knot off. So what I'll do, I'll take my scissors, I'll pull this out a little bit. And there's finishing tools that you can actually whip stitch like a knot out here. But what I usually do is this. Just go around and stick it through the loop? Yeah. Yeah, a couple times, mm -hmm. you know, I'll do it a couple times, but while that zappa gap's wet, oh my, it's stuck already, yeah, there we go, there you go. Uh, I'll pull it tight, and I'll do that a couple times. If I was a fish, mm -hmm. down.
that'll catch a musky. I don't care what anybody says. Cool. It's got two little feathers hanging down. Got a rattle in it. Set. And I'll see you on the next video.